morning. Welcome. So we have been discussing the Poisson equation and we've been looking at the standard finite difference method for that. So, and we had the, the stencil where we have the center point which is uh, we denote it either by ij or by say the point p then with a eastern neighbor e that is i plus one j and the western neighbor which is i minus one j we have the northern neighbor which is i j plus one and the southern neighbor which is I J minus one. So these that makes the five point stencil that we have been using for discretizing the Poisson equation. So let's take that. And that was we have the we can also write in short form the second derivative of u plus the with respect to x, the second derivative of u with respect to y is equal to some given function f of x1. And we have used the standard discretization, the standard central difference uh, approximation, and then we essentially uh, discretized actually by taking it in the form we wrote it, the minus of that. So then we got the uh, this standard finite difference discretization, we get the equation that was 15, that was then the FDM, the standard FDM, and we said we can write that in the form with coefficients AS, UIJ minus 1 minus AW, UI minus 1J, plus AP, UIJ, and then we have the coefficients in the east, coefficient in the east that is ui plus 1j and minus a north, which is uij plus 1. And that is then, because we are doing the discretization of the minus of that, minus f of x i y j. And these coefficients, they are the A West equal to the A East, they are minus 1 over delta X squared, and the A uh, South is equal to the A North, which is minus 1 over delta Y squared. So we might have different grid spacings in X and Y direction, so that's allowed. And if we use this notation, we get for the center coefficient, that that is actually the sum of the neighbor coefficients, which are then these AS, AW, AE, and AN. And that turns out then to be, um, let's see, I think here I did a mistake. You can correct that easily. It is actually plus, because the minus is getting in here. So it is plus, sorry for that. So it's plus 1 over delta x squared and plus 1 over delta y squared. And here we see then that the sum of that gives 2 divided by delta x squared plus 2 divided by delta y squared. So this is a general form that we can also use for other equations. And uh, we shall come back to this form. What we did yesterday was to see what this equation means. Actually, it is not just one equation, because it is valid for i from 1 to ni, and for j from 1 to nj. So it is valid at all interior grid points, because in what we did yesterday, we assumed directly boundary conditions at all the boundaries. So remember, we had a rectangular domain, and we had then um, our grid equidistant in x and y and we assume that we have along the boundaries everywhere we have the, uh, the solution given as boundary conditions, as directly boundary conditions and then our notation was then that we have the one so the i is going then in this direction this is the ni and here we go from one to nj 
So the, uh, the zeros, say the i equal to zero, that is a boundary. The i equal to nj plus one is a boundary. j equal to zero is a boundary, and j equal to nj plus one is a boundary. There we have the data we don't need to compute. So we restrict ourselves to the points where we need to compute the unknowns. So this would be then the point x, ij. Very next ij. Okay, and we saw this leads to a block tridiagonal linear system of equations. And in that uh, system, then these coefficients appear, and we saw that we can, uh, now we want to see also that we can write this uh, system in a little different form, and that is what we want to do now. So the form that we saw yesterday, this block tridiagonal form, that is a way to express all things in detail. But we can also do it in the form that we shall see now. So this block tridiagonal form that we have is 16, that corresponds to the form that we want to look at now. And that is uh, a pentadiagonal. So then we look at the real, the level of all the components itself. And that is a pentadiagonal linear system. Of equations, and that is then the following. We call that 18. It's some space. It's getting big. And um, let's see. So we argued first that we have an ordering. We have to have an ordering. And we decided on the ordering to start with 1, 1, then take uh, 2, 1, so at i. So we go along i. So here, and then we go up here. We continue here and go along this line go up again and continue all the way to the end. So that is our ordering. So regarding to i, we let the i first go and then j. So that means the unknowns that we are going to get, they will be, we write them already in this form, that will be, we start with the u11, the next will be the u21, and so on, and then we will get the u n i one. Then we have gone through all in the first line of the unknowns. And then we get here. So that is then one two. U one two. U two two. Let's see, and so on. And then we go all the way through to u n i two. Then the whole thing continues, u13, u23, uh, and so on, to the uni3, and so on. So that will be, and these values we want to compute. So what we have here, that is in the first line, so all these unknowns here go up to here. And that was then our what we call the capital U1. And then this one up to here, that was our capital U2 in the block triangle tri form. That is then representing the unknowns on the second line, the second interior line. And then this is then the third one. On the right hand side, we shall see what we get. We already can say that from the during start, we will definitely get here the minus f of x1, y1. That, is the, that will definitely appear here, the minus f of x1, y1. The second will definitely be x of f of x2, y1, and so on. That will be minus f of x, n, i, n, i. Uh, y1 and minus f of x1 y2 
minus f of x2, y2. So you see these indices, they match nicely. And here we will get the minus f of x n i2. Uh, sorry, that is the y2. And that is the last one with the y2. And then we start with the uh, uh, f of x1, y3 minus f of x2, y3, and so on, minus f of x, n, i, y3. So that we can say uh, just very easily. So now we want to look into uh, the matrix itself. So now we want to express this in this matrix form. So what uh, can we say there? If we start from the, the first one here, we have uh, i equal 1 and j equal to 1. So that means we have here 1, 0. 1, 0 is at the boundary, at the southern boundary. So that, there we have the boundary condition. So we can use that. We call the boundary condition, let's see, we call that, let's see, we call the, at the bottom boundary, we call it GC. That was called GD, GB, and GA. So the, the U is equal to these guys at the boundaries. So that means here we have the boundary condition. That means here we can use the boundary condition. And we do it such that we bring this now on the right hand side. So it gets with a plus on the right hand side. So that is our first action here. We get here a plus AS, and we have argued that should then be the GC, and it should be at the X1. Well, um, yeah, okay, so let me do it all in detail. So then we have taken this into account and the boundary condition. Next, this one, the AW. That is then the AW U0, uh, let's see, U01, that is a J, which is then here at the left boundary. So there we can use the boundary condition GA of uh, Y1. And we bring that also on the right hand side. So then we have more space here, so we write it in this way. So it will be plus, of course, we bring it on the other side. We will then have the GA of y1. So that appears on the right hand side. Now this guy is easy because that will be our first entry in the matrix. So that will be the first element of our matrix, a11, because that will multiply the u11. So that is fine. Next one is this, that will be u21. So then we will have a minus ae. So that will appear here. And then we have this one, A and U12. Now we have to see where is the U12. It is only here. So that means there will be a couple of zeros in between before we get the minus AN. And the number of zeros is, is actually count it, will be n i minus 2. That will be the numbers of zeros that we have there, because we have to go all across these, they will all be zero, they do not enter, and only then we get, it, we get an entry. Okay, so then we have, and the rest is just zero. So we have only these entries. So that is the first line. That is was for i equal 1, j equal 1. Next is i equal 2, uh, j equal 1. So then we will have still the, uh, the u, let's see, we have the, the u2, that is, will be the u2, 0, then we are here. And this point will uh, enter, let's see, um, let's see. Yes, 
and then we are here. So then this will enter and it will again be the boundary condition. Good. Of course we have u to zero. U to zero is also at the southern boundary. So we can again move that to the right hand side. So we get then the plus a s g c and that will now be at x2. Then we get to this one. Now we are fine because we have i is 2, this will be 1, 1. 1, 1 is this, so we'll get an entry here, which will be minus a w. The next is in the diagonal, 2, 2, and that will be then the um, a uh, p, let's see, no, that will be the 2, 1, sorry, 2, 1. That's correct. And then we will get the minus AE, U, 3, 1. That will be the minus AE. And then we get again a couple of uh, zeros because we, this will be then uh, the U, 2, 2. The U, 2, 2 is here. So it will be then down here, minus AN. And in between, we will have again the n i minus two zeros. And from that on, we will just have zeros all the way. So now I skipped it, it should be in this, in this height, but uh, so it should be matched there, but okay. You see the principle. And um, well, I use too much space I see here, but <coughs> we don't mind. We have now taken into account, no, we are not yet ready, we, because uh, we, we will continue this all the way down until we get here. When we get here, then we will have again the AP in the diagonal. We will again, again have the AW uh, to the left and the minus AE to the right, because they are coupled. So this will be U and I. And I'm sorry, this will not be here. Here we have to be a little careful because uh, this one is, let's see, we have to make it a little bit more precise here. So the AP is down here, the minus AW is here, and now we would have the AE, but the AE is then getting, making contact to, because we are then here, it's con making contact to the right boundary. First, we have, though, to take into account the AS, because we are here, we are still having some contribution from the southern boundary. So that will be minus AS, UNI0. So that will come then from the right-hand side. So then we'll have then the plus U uh, times GC of XNI. And um, the last one before, that is uh, similar to that one, but actually in this very last one, we will have also the AE contribution, as we just discussed, because we are here, and this contribution from the AE, that will be then the UN um, I plus one, uh, one. So that will come to the right hand side. So let's do it this way here. So we'll get then the plus, um, that will be the plus AE, that will be then the GB of uh, one, uh, 1. So that will enter here. Okay, so then we I should, then we have this here, that is okay. So then we have here just, the, the rest will be zeros. Up to, let's see, not all the way, because we will have also the AN. The AN will also enter at some point, the minus AN, because um, this will be the UNI uh, this will be 2. Uh, 
uh, that will be then, it will enter here. So this has to be multiplied with this. So therefore we get the contribution there. But the rest uh, here and this A, E, well, the last one will be up here. So, and the A, W will be here. So then we have that structure and we have now taken into account uh, the first n i unknowns. And that was for the first line. So then we go to the second line. Then we have uh, j equal to 2. And then we do the same procedure. And um, what do we get? Now the a w uh, will be on the boundary. So that will be then a boundary contribution. And we have to take that then to the right hand side. Let's see. Try to do that. So then we have it. Then it will get with a plus a w. And that will be then the g a. So it will be, we are now here at y2. So you see in the first row we had AWGA of Y1, here we have AWGA of Y2. But now we are fine because we have now, um, we are now at this point here, so we have then the AW will be, a we have access to that, no we have not access to that, so that will be a zero, that is a boundary condition taken into account. But the AS, that is now available because this is now uh, A, um, this AU11. So that means we have the AS and the minus AS that will be here, the minus AS. And in between there will just only be zeros. And then we start again with the AP, multiplying the U12. And the neighbor is of course minus AE, multiplying, multiplying U22. So that is all fine. Then we will have again our N I minus two zeros, and we will have a minus AN. So that will then go on Let's see, I think it will be the U13, yes, so that is available. So then you see this structure will continue, now we are fine, and uh, we will then have the next one will be zero, the minus AS will be here, zeros here, and we will have a zero here, but here we'll get the minus AW, the AP, the minus AE, and I minus two zeros, and up to here at the minus a n. So this structure will continue all the way down. And also the a n's and the a s will continue all the way down. So then what we get in the end is we get the a p in the diagonal. We get the, we go to the left, the minus a w but we have in between always some points with the zeros. And the zeros then will then be the points where the boundary uh, conditions enter. That is the same with the AE. The AE is appearing everywhere, but again, when we get close to the, that case, the right boundary, we have some zeros involved. But otherwise, it's just minus AE. The minus AS, as soon as it's appearing, it's just continuing and also the mi minus a n is just continuing. And where we don't have that, like here the minus a s, it appears then on the right hand side. Also, when we get down here, the minus a n that we cannot represent here, <coughs> there's a boundary data, then at the top boundary, it will appear on the right hand side. So, just to uh, continue to, to uh, finish up this part here, let's see. Here we will not have anything. They are all involved, but when we get to the, uh, this point, let's see, 
when we get to this point here, we would again have the, uh, the eastern boundary involved because then we are at this point here, then this will be involved. So here it is just as it is indicated, but here it will be involving the AE. So it is NIY2. AE will involve the GB of Y2 now. Okay, and then um, it will, so this pattern that we have here, that will continue. So the next will be again the AW, uh, the GA of uh, Y3, that is the left boundary, here is nothing, and here we will again have the AE uh, times the GB of the Y3. In between there is just the right hand side. So this pattern will continue up to when we get close to the uh, last, uh, when we get to the last NI unknowns, <laughs> and then we will have this pattern plus on the right hand side contributions involving uh, GD, involving the AN. So we will have like we have here the AS, we will have here down in the bottom the AN, the northern boundary, times GD of uh, similar terms. And in between these uh, diagonals, all the way in between here, all this here <coughs> is zero. And also all this in between here, that is all zero. And then the lower left and the upper right is all zero. So then we have uh, this structure here that we have uh, like that. We have five diagonals. So that is the name, Penta, the Greek name for five. So five diagonals. So that is the matrix that, that we get. So it is a little bit more complicated to write it in this form, you see I run out of space, then writing it in the block tridiagonal form that we saw last time. There I could write it really on one part of the blackboard and we could identify all the parts. But it, it is the same thing. And you can build it up in both ways. You can build it up with a, a block tridiagonal form. There is in, in MATLAB, there is a, a command called KRON that is for Kronecker product. So if you use that, you can build it up with a block triangular form. Or you can just do it directly in this form. And that is what Rader did, what you can look up from the Tuesday um, demo, and what you can also use for exercise 10. Okay, so then, um, so this is then a little of a job and a bookkeeping book job, and uh, to do that. But you see, there is a nice structure in that, and uh, so you just have to do that carefully. So when you have done it, then we have a linear system of equations, which we can then express in the following form. A is this block triangle matrix. We have our vector of unknowns. So then we can say that 18 that can also be expressed as matrix A times the vector U is equal to the right hand side R. So then we have reduced our PDE problem solving the Poisson equation by discretization with finite differences, we have reduced that to a linear system of equations, to, to this system of equations that we have to solve. So then we just go ahead and solve that. And uh, the classical way would be to use uh, Gauss elimination. Another way to say Gauss elimination is LU decomposition. Usually you have to do some pivoting, but we shall see you can avoid that if you have matrices with certain structure. And that is what essentially the backslash does. A new decomposition with pivoting. 
and there, there are probably some more tricks involved because it's so fast. But at some point, as you also saw in Tuesday with radar, you can easily run out of memory with that. So therefore, next week we'll see iterative methods where you can do that uh, without memory problems. Anyway, we have to solve this, and the solution of that is then our solution to the Poisson equation at all the interior points where we were interested. Of course, the boundary points we know already from the directly boundary condition. Then we just have everything and we can plot it as we like. So, that is um, how it works. And we shall now uh, see a little bit uh, to the mathematical properties of this matrix. It has some nice properties. So let's ju just mark uh, this, uh, do this remark that the solution, solution u is equal to, that is the, the vector, I write it this form, the u11, uh, u21, and so on, until the u ni nj transposed, that is then the solution um, that is the solution of the linear system, 18, is the numerical solution, solution of the Poisson equation that we have been considering. And that was what we have here, only one. So that is, that is the story. Now, regarding the mathematical properties of A. Because they are useful when we do the solution of the system. First, we have not yet talked about the size of this matrix but that uh, we can easily identify by our unknowns. So we have, um, we have here ni unknowns, and they are corresponding to the ni interior points in the x direction. And we have nj of these rows. So we have, um, we have just here see the first three, but we have nj of them. So that means we have ni times nj unknowns. And that makes the dimension of the matrix. So we have that many rows and that many columns. So that means the first point to remark is that A is a n by n matrix where the n, capital N, is the product of ni and nj. So that is what we can already say. And the other thing is, just by looking at this, and if we look at it, uh, uh, say, with more uh, uh, rows, we will see it even better. There are most in entries of this matrix are zeros. That is called a sparse matrix. So most entries are zeros. And we exploit that in MATLAB by using the command sparse. Because sparse then only stores the non-zero values. And they are only these five diagonals. The other, it does not need to be stored. So that is a, an important property of uh, this matrix A, that it is sparse. It is actually a band matrix, a pentadiagonal matrix. So 
if you would do it in at the un, any other programming language, you would also do it. Too. You would just store the the um, the eigenals that are non-zero. The other property is, if you remember, if we said in the beginning of the recap today that these coefficients a w and a e are equal, and also that a s and a n are equal. So that means this matrix is symmetric. Completely symmetric. And that means to say that A is equal to A transposed. And that is the dash in, uh, in MATLAB. And for the reason I just said. Then a property that is uh, not so obvious but can be shown that A is what is called positive definite. And that means that it has the following property, that has number 19, that um, the product of the transposed of a vector x times the matrix A times the vector x is greater than zero for all x that are vectors x that are not zero. When vector x is zero, then it's zero, but that's not interesting. The interesting thing is that this expression is always positive. And, um, but remember, we wrote the matrix in the form that we are discretizing the minus a second derivative. So we get a positive entry here. So that, that is important. Otherwise, it would be negative definite if we had done the discretization of u, um, of nabla u directly. So this is something, and for that type of matrices, which are symmetric and positive definite, we have some good methods for the uh, solution of the linear system. The other property, it is that we can actually show, is that A is diagonally dominant. And that means the following. So we say that a matrix, the definition, matrix A, uh, diagonally dominant. satisfied. First one, that the diagonal entry AII is greater equal than the sum of the off diagonal entries in the same row. That is J from 1 to N and J is then not equal to I and we look for AIJ in the modulus. So when we are in some uh, row where the i is the same, then we are saying that the entry in the diagonal is in absolute value larger than the sum of the moduli of the off diagonal entries. So we'll prove that in a minute. So, but that is one condition that has to hold for all i from 1 to n. So that is a condition that has to would, in any case, test be greater, greater equal. So equal is okay. But we have another condition in addition. That is the condition that this must be fulfilled with a larger or at least one i. So the i, i, i has to be larger than the sum of the off diagonal, uh, off diagonal from j from 1 to n, j not equal to i of the a i uh, j for at least one i. So then, uh, if, then we say that the matrix is fulfilled, fulfilling these two properties is diagonally dominant. 
Now we want to prove that for our matrix here. Context of equation 15 that we showed that this is equal, and we used it actually in the beginning of the lecture, that this is equal to the neighboring coefficients, the sum of the neighboring coefficients. A south plus A north plus A w, A west plus A east. So that is what we proved. And all these guys are positive. So that means we can write it again in this form. And D, and that is an absolute value of N D. And uh, now we see what do we have. We have in the in the best case we have um, these guys with a minus sign. We have all minus A S, minus A W, minus A D, minus A N. But that is for the absolute value, it's no problem, it's the same. So that means uh, can also write this then as the sum of the neighbors of minus a and b. And then we are done. The rest is zero. So then we have proved everything because this is then equal in our case the, to the sum of um, of everything that we have in, in the line, in the row. So then we have, because anything else except for our neighbors is zero. So we, we are essentially, we are done. So then we have equal. So then that means from that we have the condition 20a is okay. That is that the larger equal. In our case it's equal. Then we have to look for this case, but there we can take, for example, the first row easily. In the first row we have uh, so the first row we have the AP gain is positive, it's unchanged, and that is equal to, we can just use our arguments that we have here, that is still valid for minus a and b, but in our case we have only the minus a e and the minus a n involved in our case. Minus a B plus minus A N. So then we have, and that is all what we have. This is the sum of all the moduli of the off diagonal. So the rest is zero. So then th that means from that that the condition 20 uh, B is satisfied. So then we have shown for at least one I, it is I equal to one, that this condition holds. And it is uh, valid for many, many other rows. So this definition, uh, this uh, condition is uh, clearly satisfied. So that means that the matrix is diagonally dominant. Okay, I think we take a break here and continue after the break by completing this and looking at the condition but the situation when we have not directly boundary conditions, even all over the place, but when we have at some boundaries Neumann boundary conditions. <laughs>